School is such a big part of our lives. We spend so many years in school learning, but we never actually learn the most important skill that could help us to be successful in school. We never actually learn how to learn. It's just assumed that you're gonna go to class and figure it out on your own. And if you're anything like me, you probably did what was assigned to you in class and just learned by watching what other students were doing, like reading the textbook, highlighting every second sentence until you could see my textbook from space, copying what was written on the blackboard. And all the time, I was just putting the time and getting my head down to study as much as I could because I thought that there would be somehow a linear relationship between how much you study and your grades. And I really thought that the more time I spent studying would help me to higher up my grades. But I just started growing increasingly frustrated when I saw that my friends who were studying much less than me, getting better grades, and that would just lead me to a downward spiral where I would just try to outwork everyone else and just study more than everyone and burn out at the end with little to no improvement to my grades. So instead of studying for longer hours, I decided to actually spend time to learn how to learn so I could understand what the most successful people in my class were doing differently. Because we all have only 24 hours in a day and the people that are most successful in my class were spending their time more efficiently than me. Because there is a ceiling and it gets to a point where you just cannot study for more hours to save your grades. And Einstein already said that insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting to achieve different results. So if you find that something is not working for you, it's your job to do something about it. So instead of continuing using the same study techniques that keeps getting you C's, in this video, I'm gonna share with you tried and tested study techniques to help you to study smarter and not harder. And if you're new here, hi, my name's Karina. Welcome to my channel where I share study hacks, productivity tips, and practical frameworks to help you to level up your life through education. And the first thing you're gonna do is to eat that frog. And no, you're actually not gonna be eating any frog here because eating a frog does not make you smarter. Sorry, French people. Eating that frog actually refers to a time management strategy that helps you to prioritize your tasks by focusing on the most important and most difficult tasks first. And this whole concept actually came from a quote from Mark Twain, which says that if it's your job to eat a frog, it's best to do it first thing in the morning. And if it's your job to eat two frogs, it's best to eat the biggest one first. And this quote essentially is telling us to focus on the most difficult things first, because most of the times the things that are avoiding the most are usually the things that you need to do the most. For example, Let's say that you have a 2000 word essay due tomorrow, but you also have a bunch of smaller tasks like homework, readings, and quizzes. And you might be tempted to start with the easiest things. And instead of doing the easy things first, because they're easier and faster to get done with, start with the most challenging task of the day. You're gonna start with the big essay first. And once you completed that, you're gonna feel a sense of accomplishment and motivation to tackle the smaller tasks later. And for me, I start working right after going to the gym, when I'm feeling most energized and when I have a lot of endorphins going through my body after doing some sports. And that's where my willpower to get through the most difficult things are usually much higher as well. And once I get the hardest things out of my way, I usually feel a sense of momentum because I already finished the most challenging part of my day and everything else just feels easier in comparison. And the rest of my day is gonna go by much more smoothly as a result. So if you wanna learn more about how to get started by eating that frog, Brian Tracy actually wrote a whole book about it called Eat That Frog, which I highly recommend if you're interested in learning more. The second tactic follows the Pareto Principle, also known as the 80-20 rule, which states that 80% of the results comes from 20% of the efforts we actually make. And the Pareto Principle was first discovered by an Italian economist called Alfredo Pareto in 1896, who observed that 80% of the land in Italy was owned by just 20% of the population. And using the same method, he later found that this ratio held true in many other areas, such as the distribution of wealth and income. And today, the Pareto Principle is widely used in business finance, and productivity to identify the most important tasks and allocate resources accordingly. 
So how can we actually apply the Pareto Principle to our own study to be more productive? Using the Pareto Principle means that you should start by focusing on studying the core topics first, before niching down on the details that are much less likely to appear in your exam in any significant way. For example, let's say that you're studying for a math exam. Instead of trying to memorize every single formula, focus on the most important ones first that are most likely to appear on the exam. And once you have the most important formulas nailed down, along with how to use them, you're gonna move on to more specific formulas that are used in more niche scenarios. And this is gonna save you a lot of time and help you to retain the most important information that you need to master a specific subject. Study hack number three, the Parkinson's law. So according to the Parkinson's law, our work tends to expand to fill the time allocated to its completion. And the same goes for our studying. So the next study hack is using the Pomodoro technique to manage your time more effectively. So the Pomodoro technique is a time management method developed by Francisco Cirillo in the late 1980s. It's a very simple but very powerful technique that involves breaking your work into focused intervals, typically 25 minutes long, separated by short breaks. And the name Pomodoro comes from the Italian word tomato, inspired by the tomato-shaped kitchen timer that Cirillo used during his university days. And studies have shown that our brains can only maintain high levels of focus for a limited amount of time before needing a break. And by working in short and focused bursts, followed by brief rest periods, the Pomodoro technique leverages our brain's natural rhythms to optimize productivity and concentration to follow the Pomodoro technique, you're gonna need to set a timer for 25 minutes. And here you don't need a kitchen timer, you can just use your phone. And you're gonna study without any distractions until the timer goes off. When the timer goes off, you're gonna have a five minute break where you can scroll through your phone and do whatever you want to unwind your mind. I personally like taking this time to stretch my legs, go to the bathroom and just make me a cup of tea but you can do whatever you want to relax and get ready for your next study block. These intense study blocks followed by a break can also help us to set ourselves mini study goals throughout the day for each study session, which can help to keep us motivated and keep working towards our goals. And while the Pomodoro technique works great, in my personal experience, the optimal duration of intervals may vary between people. For me, for example, only 25 minutes of focused work seems a little bit short. So if I'm studying a topic that I really enjoy and that I'm good at, I usually study for longer stretches without needing any breaks. So I usually set study intervals for around 80 minutes followed by a 10 minute break. But when it's a subject that I find it very boring or difficult, I tend to just follow the traditional 25 minutes of deep work followed by a five minute break as a Pomodoro classic to make it less mentally taxing to do something hard by reminding myself that I only need to do it for 25 minutes. So play around with it, try to set out different time intervals to see what works best for you. But don't forget study breaks, they're very important. Tip number four, one of the most common misconceptions among students, including myself from the past, was that the best way to learn something is by passively reading through your notes or textbooks. But actually, numerous psychological studies have found out that we actually learn best when we use a process called active recall. And active recall is based on the concept of the testing effect, which suggests that the act of trying to retrieve the information from our memory actually strengthens the neural connections and helps us to consolidate the information in your long-term memory. In other words, when you actively try to recall information from your brain, you're actually engaging your brain in the process of retrieving and reconstructing the information. And in this way, it actually sends signals to your brain that the information that you keep trying to remember is actually important, which in turn releases neurochemicals that stimulates memory formation in our brain to help us to really solidify those memories and to make it easier and faster to find the answers that you're looking for in the next time. So how can you actually incorporate active recall into your study routine? One simple way to start is to use flashcards. And you can write a flashcard by writing a question on one side of the card and then the answer on the other side. Then instead of just reading those cards, you're gonna try to actively recall the answer from memory. And even if you get the answer wrong and review the correct answer later, 
just by pushing your brain to try to retrieve the answer, it'll help you to strengthen those neural connections so you remember the answer faster next time. Tip number five is all about the Feynman technique. And the Feynman technique is another powerful learning strategy developed by the legendary physicist Richard Feynman. And this method is based on the idea that the best way to understand a concept is by explaining it as if you were teaching it to someone else. I personally thought that you only mastered a topic when you could eloquently explain it to other people using difficult terms that only you could understand. But this actually could not be further from the truth. In fact, you can only truly master a topic when you can numb it down and turn complex problems into simple and very easy to follow explanations. So if you wanna make sure that you learn something properly, pretend you're explaining the concept to a five-year-old and use simple language and analogies to make the concept as clear and as concise as possible. By breaking down complex ideas into simple terms, it can help you to find knowledge gaps to deepen your understanding of the subject and improve your retention and recall. And you can put the Feynman technique into practice by teaching a friend. This not only helps you to study, but it will also help your friend to learn something new. And if you want to take it one step further to optimize your study time, you can actually create study groups where each person in the group chooses a topic to study and focus on to later explain to the rest of the group. So each person can focus on what they're most comfortable with and then share and learn from each other much faster than if each one of you were studying everything on their own. But if you don't have anyone to explain it to and you're on your own, you can still do it just as well by explaining it to yourself out loud in front of a mirror as if there was another person there. Tip number six, if you ever try to memorize anything for an exam, you have probably used mnemonics. But what exactly are mnemonics? Mnemonics are memory aids that helps us to remember information by associating it with something else. And mnemonics can take many forms, including acronyms, rhymes, visual images, and many more. And the dual coding theory suggests that our brain processes information more effectively when it's presented both in verbal and visual formats. And since mnemonics often involve visualizing concepts, it makes them a powerful tool for memory retention. And you can make mnemonics even stickier by relating the new information you just learned to something you already know. Mnemonics are widely used to learn new languages or remember important dates and events in history. Mnemonics can come in so many forms. Mnemonics can come in the form of acronyms, and an acronym is formed from the initial letters of a series of words. For example, a SMART goal is a popular acronym used to remind people to set specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound goals. Mnemonics can also come in the form of cross-checks. And similar to acronyms, acrostics involve using the first letter of each word in a sentence to remember something. For example, my very educated mother just served us nine pizzas. This sentence is commonly used as an acrostic to help students remember the order of planets in our solar system, like Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and previously Pluto. Visual mnemonics involve creating a mental image to remember a concept. So for example, to remember the order of planets in our solar system, you could create a visual image of a man standing on a red planet, Mars, followed by a woman standing on a white planet, Venus, and so on and so forth. This technique is particularly useful for visual learners and can help to make abstract ideas more concrete and more memorable. By associating a visual image with a word or phrase, students can improve their recall and understanding of complex concepts. Rhyming mnemonics are also very helpful because it involves creating a rhyme to remember a concept. For example, 30 days help September, April, June, and November. This is a popular rhyming mnemonic used to remember the number of days in each month. Now, moving on, tip number seven, you probably already heard the saying that if you don't use it, you lose it. And space repetition is a learning technique that involves increasing intervals of time between the reviews of your previously learned materials. So we can get over our own forgetting curve and not forget what we learn. And the forgetting curve is a graph that helps us to visualize how our brain forgets the information over time. And this concept was first observed by Hermann Erigaus in the late 19th century. 
Abigail's discovered that our brains forget the information over time, following a very specific forgetting curve, where you remember 100% of the things that you just learned, 58% after 20 minutes, 44% after an hour, and so on and so forth. And that means that after we initially learn something, we gradually start to forget it over time, unless we revise that piece of knowledge over and over again. And after every revision, it takes a little bit longer and longer before we forget it again. And the forgetting curves becomes a little bit less steep as information starts to go from our short-term memory to our long-term memory. And that means that if we review the information just before we are about to forget it, we can significantly improve our long-term memory retention. And this is where space repetition comes in. By strategically reviewing the information at increasing intervals, we can actually hack our brain's forgetting curve and enhance our long-term memory in the process. Here, there are various different apps and softwares that can help you to set steady intervals for space repetitions, like NK or Quizlet. And these platforms use algorithms to automatically schedule your reviews based on your performance. So instead of cramming for an exam, you can actually space out your study sessions to progressively beat the forgetting curve. For example, after you study, you can review the material the day after you learn it, and then subsequently three days later, one week later, and so forth, until you know it by heart. And space repetition is a long-term strategy, not a quick fix. So consistency is key to seeing the benefits. And by incorporating the science-based study strategies into your own learning process, will help you to learn smarter and not harder. And if you use any other study techniques to help you to learn faster and more effectively, let me know in the comments. I always love to learn new ways to become a better learner and your ideas may also help with someone else too. Just remember that studying is such a personal thing. So find out what works best for you and keep making small improvements to become a better learner. It doesn't happen overnight and it's okay. So just take your time. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more educational content and study tips. And if you'd like to supercharge your learning and earning potential with a degree from a top university, you can check out some resources I have on the video description. Don't forget that the more you learn, the more you can achieve. So stay inspired, stay motivated, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.